You'll see that in the module here, I've got a nice display that's a video that shows us ways in which we can use all of these processors, the spectrum, time, amplitude, together in a recording session. And it highlights some of the differences in the ways in which we are using it for different purposes, but we're using them collectively to make an overall production sound. So I'd definitely like you to check that out, the Sound Pure video that's associated with this in the module. Right now I'd like to take a moment to talk about some ways in which particularly amplitude processors can be abused, uh, per particularly in the area of music, to achieve a goal that may be useful for the business but is not very useful from an artistic standpoint. So let's go ahead and check this out. This is something that has been called the loudness wars. When we think about the loudness wars, what we're really thinking about is how the mastering of recordings has changed over time. This particular image that you're seeing here is a display of the sound file associated with the same piece of music and the piece of music was sampled through different times when it was released. So different mastering that was going on at the time for the releases. So it starts off in this particular um, GIF in 1983, 87, 93, 2000. As we get to the more contemporary time period, you can see that the block of green is increasing dramatically to the point where what we end up doing is minimizing the variations, the nuances that might be in the music in the effort to make the music louder. Part of the reason behind making it louder was because people were interested in trying to make it stand out more on the radio, which you know may be a worthwhile marketing goal, but from an artistic goal, it's really problematic. So we've had instances where record companies are mixing and mastering and increasing the overall volume of the particular recordings, um, but in the process really losing some of the interesting nuances associated with the music. So I suggest that you take a moment and check out the video associated with this uh, icon here in the um, module. That way you can really have a good demonstration of how this expansion of the sound has led to differences in the quality and there's a nice demonstration that basically gives you a sense of what that original 1983 sound is like versus the 2000 type of sound. So you can kind of hear how it is different. I also would like to bring your attention to another comparison that highlights this loudness wars idea. Um, this is something that is also in the module below. This Metallica recording uh, versus the Guitar Hero version of the same thing. I don't know if you remember the old Guitar Hero video game, but it became quite popular and one of the things that they were doing was getting recordings from uh, rock groups just as they were being released so that they could include a selection from this new release in the new Guitar Hero game and that way they kind of marketed each other, right? And so Metallica had uh, Death Magnetic coming out and Guitar Hero received uh, a master of one of the songs there and what happened was though it re they received a master before it would was all the way processed so Guitar Hero processed it for its game and Metallica's mastering did it for its release and what we have here in the video below is a comparison between the two and what I'd like you to do is listen to how the CD mastering differs from the Guitar Hero mastering. You'll see that the Guitar Hero mastering has a little less emphasis on that volume and may be sharper in some aspects. You may hear some instruments standing out more. So there might be some more clarity in some instruments than we're hearing in the recording or the mastering for the CD, which is really interesting. Of course, you know, it could be that the musicians really preferred having an overall kind of mushy, less defined sound that might be something they were striving for, 
but uh, most people will listen to the comparison and hear the Guitar Hero mastering as one that allows the music to be heard in a clearer manner. So it's just something to keep in mind and is an application of these amplitude processing tools in a manner that can go awry and show you that you know you can abuse these tools thinking that you're trying to achieve a good goal and find out that you're actually squeezing the life out of these tools or out of the original sound source. So that's our processing wars or loudness wars and I'd like you to check that out as well.